Okay. Let's see if we can get this beetle bot going. There we go. There we go. Well, what's the deal with that big gray one there? Well, the big gray one <coughs> is the original scale and size of the file that I found on Thingiverse by someone called John... I'm looking at it now. 517. And he posted the, the build back in 2014, September 2014. So this is 22, so that's what, eight years ago. <clears throat> Let's uh, spin the camera around here. Hang on. There's this thing of hers. If I can get the camera to even sort of, kind of, almost be level. And I don't seem to be able to. So you're going to have to put up with it being a little crooked. So I, once I found this, I thought it was kind of a cool build. Everything is held to go with a little C-clip so you can take it all apart and put it together. He was using a rubber band drive. There, you, you'll see here in a minute there's a large... Um, screw worm gear that goes the full length of the body and then each leg has its own gear that drives it and then that one main worm gear screw gear whichever it's the proper terminology drives it all and he was driving that main screw gear with a rubber band up to a motor up in the top and I looked at several YouTubes of people that tried to build it and basically they could make them work by holding them in their hand or <clears throat> lifting the weight up off of them with wires or something but not too successful in making it run with the batteries on board and and even under the weight of its own motor so a few things that I wanted to change on the design to try to make it more practical is one and one to beef up the legs to get rid of some of the slop and wobble because you can see there's a very skeletal I wanted to uh, change the diameter of the gears so that they mesh together a little bit tighter so there was less chance of them skipping a tooth and getting out of whack and I uh, wanted to reduce the scale because uh, that size is so large that you get a lot of flexing in the PLA parts and anytime anything flexes especially down on the bottom base is where I wanted to flex the most then that makes the gears again skip a tooth and get out of whack so to address all those changes if I can get this camera where I can see and you can see I decided to go with what's now available is the you know the very small N20 style gears and you can find these everywhere but I ordered mine off Amazon because there's sellers up there that sell them in as many as 10 different gear ratios and I didn't know what gear ratio was going to be right for this project so I actually ordered four or five all in different gear ratios and in the end I found that the uh, 1000 RPM worked the best. You could even actually go a little faster than if you wanted. Now to reduce the number of parts and get rid of some of the flexing issues that this had, there were eight parts that comprised the base according to the <clears throat> original design. Although this base piece here I've already beefed up a little so it would actually be a little bit more flimsy. But because there's so much cut away and such a small amount on either end, it could get flexing when the legs attached, and then that would make everything skip. In the original design, you had a, a bearing block that went up here in the front. You had, um, let's turn this around, a bearing block that went up in the front, like that. And this is the bearing block and motor that I holder that I made for the N20. Normally it would have looked just like that one. A bearing block in the back. And then you had the actual worm or screwdriver, whichever you want to call it, which went in between the two, like so. And then you had a top part, which is actually going to start holding the uh, leg shoulders. You can see this is going to be flimsy too which would go right on like like that and then little c-clips that clip on these four posts would hold that all together 
as one piece. Well, by the time you count the clips and all those other parts, you've got eight parts there. I decided to reduce that down to one part. So basically, combined this part with the lower part, with the bearing housing, with the motor housing, all is one piece. <clears throat> Don't need the C-clips. The motor jams in like it's <clears throat> like the holder I've designed it to do. But in order to get this worm drive in there, since this isn't really a bearing block anymore, I'm directly driving it, the motor is holding it, I just notched notched the top of this piece open so that the uh, when you go to assemble it, you could come along and just drop that right down into it and then insert the motor to make it one piece to simplify the build. Um, scaling it down, you could easily run this thing off of uh, a couple of small LiPo packs if you got the 6 volt M20 type motors or in my case I ended up buying the 12 volt ones so I could go in there with three or four little mini LiPo packs and run the whole thing. This isn't going to be the build video. I will go ahead and I will do a build video. I just wanted to kind of cover what got me interested in the project, <clears throat> why I reduced the size of the project from, as you can see, it's a lot smaller. So you get a lot less flexing, flexing a lot less problems. Let's go back. Let's rock it. In this case, I didn't want to buy the lipos to put in there because I won't be using them in any other project. So I am running mine off a wire. And this have a bunch of uh, AA batteries packed together to give me my 12 volts so I could get the 1000 RPM out of the motor to see if the speed's up. So you see, it could even go faster. You could even go with a higher RPM motor. It didn't have to be the 1000. But here you can see the the worm screwdriver, you see the gears interfacing. And I'll do a complete build video with a link to the new files on Thingiverse in case it's something you might want to want to build. I also built this uh, cage, this body side detail part. It just snaps on too. Snaps off the back, snaps on the front. So this whole front area, all of this area and the width of it that's all open for LiPo battery packs if you want to make the thing self-contained. And um, because it's only got six legs, instead of calling it a roving spider, <coughs> like the original designer did, I'm going to call mine uh, a beetle, a beetle bot, maybe the black beetle bot. And um, we'll go from there. <laughs>